And moving to East Asia, North Korea's latest attempt to put a spy satellite into orbit was a failure. The rocket carrying the satellite exploded just two minutes after liftoff. Pyongyang's launch attempt drew criticism from Japan, South Korea, and the United States. They believe Russia is helping North Korea with its space mission in exchange for weapons that are being used against Ukraine. Our next report takes you inside the failed launch and what it means for the region. North Korea's latest attempt to put a spy satellite into orbit has failed. Pyongyang says its rocket exploded mid-air just minutes after liftoff on Monday. The statement came after South Korea's military reported the launch of an unidentified projectile. Earlier on Monday, North Korea issued a warning that it would try to launch a satellite and its window would last until the 4th of June. This announcement prompted criticism from both Seoul and Tokyo as they urged Pyongyang to call off the launch. While Japan briefly issued an emergency alert ordering evacuations in the southern Okinawa prefecture, South Korea's military held fighter jet drills in a show of force. Even if the purpose was to launch a satellite, it is a clear violation of the relevant UN Security Council resolutions, prohibiting any launches using ballistic missile technology by North Korea. Our military is closely monitoring North Korea's possible provocations and activities and is prepared for them. So, even if they conduct missile provocations and launch of the reconnaissance satellite at the same time, I will tell you that we are fully ready for them. The United States also condemned the launch, saying it took place in violation of multiple United Nations Security Council resolutions. These resolutions ban Pyongyang's use of ballistic missile technology. Now, the attempted satellite launch followed a rare trilateral summit by Seoul, Beijing and Tokyo. South Korean President Yoon suk yeol and Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida denounced North Korea's launch plan. However, Chinese Premier Lee Chiang did not mention the launch but called on all parties to lower tensions in the Korean peninsula. Now, putting a spy satellite into orbit has long been a top priority for North Korean leader Kim Jong-un. The nuclear-armed nation claims it successfully placed its first spy satellite last November after two failed attempts. However, South Korea's intelligence agency has cast doubts on the claim of the satellite being fully functional. November's launch came two months after Kim Jong-un made a rare trip to Russia and toured its space launch center, where President Vladimir Putin promised to help Pyongyang build satellites. At the end of last year, the North Korean leader said that Pyongyang would launch three more military spy satellites in 2024. These launches would be a continuation of his military modernization program, which saw a record number of weapon tests in 2023. Reports say some Russian engineers even visited North Korea to help with its latest launch preparations. South Korea and the U.S. have alleged that North Korea is sending weapons to Moscow in return for the technical assistance and Russia is reportedly using these weapons in the war against Ukraine. But all these allegations and criticism don't seem to affect Kim Jong-un, who wants to keep an eye on the world with his space missions. From impeachment to inaugurations, if it's a political story, we are on the scene. The race for the White House is heating up. We're beating Biden. How dare he say that? If it's breaking news, we're live with the latest coverage. From the White House, the State Department, and Capitol Hill, we know the issues, but above all, we know the players to bring you the latest in-depth analysis on all the key stories that we're covering. I'm Eric Ham. Join me from Washington here on First Post America. South Africa's May 29th elections. There was a start of change in the country. We are on the bench of history. I am standing here at the forefront of change where voices echo the call for action. The nation grapples with an unemployment crisis. As South Africans prepare to cast their votes, the question looms, will the winds of change usher in a new era? or will the legacy of the past maintain its grip on the future?